this is that part where I get to use all the words that people use to describe distortion pedals that I can't can't deal with. Buzzword warning. <laughs> Special Cranker is a very natural amp-like overdrive. It's the right amount of grit and has the right amount of transparency to it, but still has like a little fuzzy edge that sounds like a little bit like a torn speaker uh, without all the harshness. And it has a full frequency response, so you're not really losing a lot of low end. There's a little bit cut out, but it has a good response. Very natural guitar sound. Special Cranker evolved from the Speaker Cranker, which was a pedal that I made to give this solid state Music Man amp like more of a tube-like character. So I really loved the amp because of how loud it got and it could just handle sub-octaves and you know the more volume you threw at it, the louder it got. It never got more distorted. But I missed a little bit of that like grit from like that you'd get from like a Marshall amp or something like that. So I made the Speaker Cranker for that. And I used it for a couple years before it became an Earthquaker product. I just found it really useful. It was a pedal that I left on all the time. Biggest differences between the Special Cranker and the Speaker Cranker is the addition of a tone control, a volume control, and then you get a switch to select between the stock clipping diodes, which is the silicon mode, and then the germanium, which is a little quieter and a little softer of a distortion sound. There's more gain in the Special Cranker and a lot more output. And with that came more treble. Um, so that's why the addition of the tone control. And otherwise, the bass sound, the bass tone is pretty identical. I think it still sounds like just a really nice tube amp overdrive. It kind of straddles a line between fuzz and overdrive. This setting is the setting that I would typically just leave it in. These pickups are pretty hot, so it's a little more distorted than what I would usually like. You know, I typically use Jazz Masters with lower output pickups, so this is what I would use for that. But it sounds uh, pretty ACDC, I would say, with the SG. <laughs> To me, it's, that, that's kind of what I would like a Marshall to sound like. You know, I would back off the gain a little bit. And that's what it typically sounds like with Jazz Masters. The same setting with the Germanium is... There's also, it's a it's something that doesn't really translate very well in a recording, but it changes the feel of the pedal when you're playing, just how it's gonna respond to your pick attack. So when the Speaker Cranker came out, uh, my biggest, like, memory of it is that Jamie was talking about he's making a new pedal. It's going to be yellow and our friend Yuri drew it and Yuri actually works for the company now. Uh, I don't know if these lightning bolts are thing that he drew but I know he drew the speaker and I always thought it was really sweet and I believe the speaker cranker is named after a Cleveland band oh, I'm not sure. yeah. but you'll have to ask Jamie about that. I can't tell you the full story but I think it's like uh, uh, harkens to a band that 
um, Tony Erba was in. And that might be totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing a picture of somebody who got a speaker cranker tattoo, which I was like, that's really cool. But, you know, it's one of the first pedals that I played and, you know, has been a favorite of mine since then. Speaker Crinker was around for, I don't exactly remember, but I'd say probably about eight years. It was in the line for eight years. It was a really misunderstood pedal because it only had one control. At first, I didn't really understand what it did. Um, you know, I didn't, I thought it was a boost pedal, I think, which some other people thought initially. If you look at the product description, it made a lot of efforts to explain that it's not a boost pedal but everyone still thought it was, no matter what. So I feel like it, it, it got overlooked as an overdrive. Every time it was brought up, oh, we're gonna discontinue the speaker cranker. You should never do that. Two speaker crankers <laughs> in a row sounds amazing. Discontinued the speaker cranker about three years ago, maybe four, and uh, I always, you know, it was pretty much my favorite overdrive pedal. It's a pedal that every time I made a pedal board, it was always on, and I tried to take it off and I was put it back on. So I knew that I would want to do something with the circuit and took a lot of feedback into consideration. People wanted more control over it, wanted to be able to lower and raise the output level, control the tone. So I always had the idea in my mind and we were approached by Yamaha, who's our Japanese distributor, to do a really limited run pedal two years ago. And uh, I didn't really know what to make, and then this popped into my head. I could revisit this idea. So I worked, I spent about a week working on it, came up with something I was happy with, and we made 100 of them. There was, uh, I think, 25 that were gold sparkle and 75 that were black, and that was gonna be it. But I ended up liking it so much that I pretty much immediately decided it would be just limited to 100. The speaker cranker, I really wanted it just to be simple. One control, control the breakup and that's it. You don't have to think about it. And with the special cranker, I, I didn't set any limits to it. It was just had an idea and kind of worked it. Knew I wanted to add the tone control and volume control. And then just started experimenting with different clipping diodes. And I, I tried a lot. And ultimately these two, the stock silicon and the germanium were the best sounding options. I'll show how the special cranker responds to different pickup types. I'll just leave it in the same setting and you can see the character of the guitar come through, but it's still, you know, it's a similar kind of bass tone, like a similar voice in every setting, but it just changes the, the gain response. <laughs> I feel like all the guitars, you know, it had the it had the same kind of distortion character from the special cranker, but they all you could tell what every guitar was. You could still tell that a Stratocaster was a Stratocaster or the Tele was a Tele, which I feel like a lot of, you know, 
tube screamer type overdrives, distortion, fuzz pedals, they kind of, they kind of obliterate the, the tone of the guitar. It's, it's tough to tell exactly what you're playing if you're using higher gain settings. This really lets the character of the guitar in their specific pickups show that.